Hey everyone, Effie here. Today I'm introducing our new pop-up poppy dies. This is a six-piece die collection that's going to let you create a beautiful pop-up inside your card. There is a coordinating stencil that'll help you color in your die cuts, but before we get into that, let's introduce the pieces. This is the base. This is the pop-up mechanism. You have the two petal pieces and then one die that'll cut out three foliage pieces. And then this small piece will go into the center of your poppy petals. Next, I'm going to die cut all of the six pieces from white cardstock. And you can also see the scored box on the right side of your base. So before I start anything, I'm just going to fold this base along the center score line and you can see there are two slits on the left side of the base and then on the right side of the base you have this score scored square I guess and the one single slit. This is the pop-up mechanism and we're just going to start folding along the scored lines and now you're going to see me make several mountain folds as we progress down the strip but as we get towards the end of this strip, we want to start making some valley folds. So here we're going to go back and make some valley folds. And you can also fold right along here. You're going to kind of fold it in half. So here you can see the tail. It's kind of curving upwards and that's because we made those valley folds. Now I just zoomed in a little bit. We're going to fold these tabs up towards you. And then this tab, I actually fold it towards me, but you actually want to fold it the other way. But don't worry about it. We'll get to that later. And then this little tab, you're going to fold it towards you. And now we have those two tabs and we're going to slide them into the two slits. And that third tab will slide into the right side slit. So as we slide these two into the left side of the base, you're going to see that the tabs naturally fold downwards since we folded those two tabs towards us. So you're going to flip the base over and you're going to glue these tabs as is just as you see it. When you're creating any kind of pop-ups for your projects, you want to use a liquid adhesive because it's just going to stick better. I'm using Thermoweb's Ultra Bond Liquid Adhesive. It's a good quality adhesive and you really don't want any parts of your pop-up mechanisms or elements to be moving around on you as you're assembling. All right, once these two tabs are adhered, I'm going to flip it over. You can see how the tabs are situated. You can see they're facing downwards or towards the bottom of the base. And now we're going to get ready to slide this third tab into the last slit, which is on the right side of the base. But you want this tab to be facing this direction um, after you slide it into the slit. So before I slide it in, I'm going to fold this tab away from me. And then I'll just carefully insert this tab into the slit. And that tab is going to be folded away from that center score line. It's going to be folded towards the right edge of your base. And that's how you're going to adhere it down. So as I adhere down, it is facing away from that center score line and towards the right edge of the base. Next, I'm just going to get situated for the next step. We're going to fold this portion down. We're going to start gluing down this tail. So I want to show you how it's going to look like once it's glued down. So it's going to be slanted like this. So don't freak out that it's not coming straight up from the center score line, there's going to be a slight slant. You have this slant and you're going to pull this part of the tail down. And this is where I showed you that scored line on the base. This underside of the tail is going to be glued onto that scored square on the base.
apply some nice firm pressure and then fold up the tail right along that score line. This is how it's gonna look. You can fold that base, fold it along that center score line. If there is a little bit of resistance, don't worry about it as long as you have this mechanism generally looking this way you're going to be okay so next we're going to continue assembling the rest of that tail the end of the tail this is going to form a second lower platform so you're going to fold this in just like this that end tab is going to be glued onto that side slanted wall so this is going to be glued to this wall like this. And I'm gonna show you how to apply the glue so that you get perfect placement. You're going to fold it along the second score line from the outer edge. So here there's two score lines. That's the second score line from the outer edge. From the outer edge, count one, two, fold it down, add glue on the end tab. Once you've added your adhesive, close your base and this is going to adhere that end tab to your pop-up mechanism, that wall of the pop-up mechanism. And if it's not flush, you can adjust before your glue dries completely. And you can keep opening and folding until you have a nice seamless pop-up mechanism on your base. And this is what it's going to look like once you're finished assembling that mechanism. And this little tab is folded towards us. And this is where we're going to glue or adhere the poppy floral later after we've blended color. Now this is a prototype stencil that I cut. Uh, this is what the actual stencil will look like and it will be cut from the Mylar stencil material. Mine is cut from cardstock because it is a prototype. Now I'm just gonna start blending some of our brand new cherry ink onto the larger poppy petal and I'm just using a large blending brush to blend some of this bright red ink. Next, I'm going to take the stencil, apply it onto the smaller petal. This is how I'm gonna position the stencil just like this. Before I blended this area, I added some paper along the edges of the stencil so that I didn't blend onto other portions of the die cut. But once I've blended onto that actual die cut, I'm going to go ahead and add some ink blending on the edges. Then I took a smaller blending brush to kind of soften up those harder lines. I'm also adding more color to the edges of the die cut because I don't want a snow white edge. I want the edges to have a nice warm tone to it for a more realistic look. We're going back to the larger petal and I'm just going to use this portion of my prototype stencil to add these stripes onto the larger petal. I am blending some Valentine red dye ink. Once I blended the stripes onto the first half of the die cut, I'm gonna do the same for the other half of the die cut. Then using the same ink and blending brush, I'm just gonna add some additional Valentine red dye ink blending to the edges of the larger petal. I want the larger petal to be slightly darker than the smaller petal, just so that there's some contrast. As I blend the Valentine Red at the edges of the larger petal, it's going to kind of blend out some of the stripes, but that is okay. Next, I'm going to add some stripes to the smaller poppy petal. And you can see that I kind of crisscross some of the stripes. You can avoid that uh, later with the actual stencil because you're gonna be able to see through the stencil. Now, the prototype has this kind of round circle area and you're just gonna use that as a guide as to where you can color in the center of your smaller poppy uh, petal die cut. I'm using a Copic marker to color in that center and add texture. I'm also gonna use a yellow Copic marker to color in this piece. You just need to color in the center of this piece. Then I'm gonna take a great Copic marker to add this detail. The finalized stencil is gonna have that shape where you can blend in the swirly area on top of that piece. So, so don't worry too much about having to color in your own pieces. And now I just 
blended some green ink onto the three foliage pieces and then I'll use this stencil areas to add detailing. Now let's get ready to start assembling. We're going to take the larger poppy petal and we're going to fold it along that score line and then we're going to add glue to that end tab and glue the end pieces just like this. Now when you glue these two ends together you want to make sure you come far enough so that there's no gap in between the this area because you don't want a gap. It's just not going to look as seamless and as nice. So as I connect these two pieces together, I want to make sure I come all the way and close any open area so that it is nice and seamless. I'm going to do the same thing with the smaller poppy petal. Fold it along that score line, add glue to the tab, and then you're going to bring that end piece all the way over and you want a nice seamless finish. Next, we're going to take the poppy center piece and we're going to fold along the score lines. Once you've folded the arm flaps, you're going to fold a mountain fold along the center of that poppy center piece. There is a score line, so you'll know where to fold. And now we're going to take the smaller poppy petal. And here you can see, I'm going to turn it over. That flap is towards the bottom. This is how you want to position your poppy petal. Next, we're going to insert the two flaps, these two flaps or arms, into the slits of the smaller poppy petal. Once those arms are all the way in, you're going to push the flaps up, flaps or arms. You're going to push these up. Now you want to put glue right along the, this area right here. Here I'm pointing to the area where you want to put your glue. Then fold it up, adhere it down, and then you're going to pull the rest of the arm down. There is a score line. You're going to know exactly where you need to put the glue and where you need to fold the arm back down. And you're then do the same thing for the other side. At this point, they look like little arms sticking out from the side of your poppy petal. Next, you're going to take your larger poppy petal and again, you want to make sure the tab is towards the bottom. You don't want that. Um, if your tab is at the top, just rotate it 180 degrees. Make sure that tab is towards the bottom. Insert the two flaps or arms into the slits of the larger poppy. And after you apply glue, you're going to fold this up and glue it along the underside of the larger poppy petal. So here, just apply your glue and then fold it along the scored line and repeat the process on the other side. Next, you're just going to close up your poppy just to make sure that it's working. And you're just going to do this a few times during the course of assembly, just so that you know that everything is where it should be. We're going to get ready to glue this into the base. You want to put glue along these two tabs, and this is kind of where you want to position your poppy petal. So put glue on both sides of the tabs and then put your poppy into the center of this area just like this. Basically, after you insert your poppy onto the mechanism, I'm going to turn this around so you can see the back and so that you can see exact placement. So this is what the rear looks like. Next, we're going to glue the base into a card base. We're going to start off by applying the liquid adhesive to one side. 
put it into your card base and you want to make sure that the center score line of your base matches up or lines up with the score line of your card base. So as I position and glue down the base, I want to make sure that I can open and close easily. Once the base is in, we're going to start gluing down the foliage pieces and we're going to glue these onto the lower mechanism or platform, sorry. We're going to glue these along the lower platform and as you place the leaves, you want to open and close to make sure that the leaves are not sticking out of your card. For this tutorial, I only use the three leaves that I cut. You can obviously cut more and add additional foliage to the inside of your card. And here you can see me kind of opening and closing and trying to place this piece so that it's not sticking out when the card is closed. So here you can see it's sticking out a little bit. So I'm just gonna keep on adjusting until you can no longer see the tip of that leaf when it's closed. And here is the pop-up poppy fully assembled. I hope you guys enjoyed this project and tutorial. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that I should change or focus on regarding this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll check out the blog to see the rest of our spring 2021 release. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because I update it regularly. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.